okay so uh, guys do you have any questions regarding uh, so yesterday's session no sir good Just today, uh, I'm planning to explain end-to-end -end, uh, uh, use case. So whatever the concepts we discussed until now. So based on all the concepts, I'm trying to explain one scenario use case, end-to-end -end application. I will try to explain. So based on that, you will get to know so how it is exactly in the real time. So what was the components we are using? What was the uh, best coding standards we are we have to follow? so that you can able to understand Guys, I will explain the use case actually. So after that, we'll go we'll go code walkthrough. So we'll get to know so what are the, what are the components I used and then so what was the coding standards I followed. So based on that, we'll get to know more information. So the use case is like this, guys. So generally, if you see in company level hierarchy, so people are uh, different level hierarchy, right? Like uh, uh, I mean, based on the company actually. So uh, based on the company, we have some designations, right? Like C9, C10, C7, C8, like that, right? So it's kind of brand, or else you can say designation, right? So there is a uh, C9. We'll take C9. It's a senior, senior uh, principal architect, something, right? So that is the designation in my company. Actually, just I'm trying to take example, uh, example, and then. I will go ahead with the use case. So there is a C9. It's a senior principal architect. Okay. So under him, under him, so might be so other people like uh, uh, so many people that tagged him, right? Like C8 might be C8. Under under senior uh, under architect under architect senior uh, I mean senior architect. Uh, architect is reporting to might be senior principal architect and then under C8 might be C7 right so like this hierarchy is there right so that is nothing but a so TL you can say if you see uh, individually so these people are reporting to C9 okay so immediate immediate next level is uh, for C9 C8 immediate next level for C8 C7 apart from that so there is a separate uh, uh, people are tagged to uh, C8 actually suppose uh, they will assign some of the pressures so they will take the pressures they will uh, he will behave like a mentor for the, all the people right understood mentor for all the people so he is trying to uh, trying to other people so whoever uh, pressures it right? so he is also uh, some practice manager practice manager for other uh, people so this is nothing but uh, some hierarchy guys so in this in this use case what i'm trying to achieve it okay so take this so i'm passing the user id okay this is a user id and then immediate next level or else all next levels right i want to get all next level people of all next level people of uh, c9 so right so if you keep s okay if you keep s it's a two boolean value actually all next level either it's a boolean uh, it's a true or false right so it's kind of true if you mentioned it true what what it will happen whatever the all the next level of c9 right c8 uh, so after the under that c8 might be mentors i mean uh, somebody people are there like c c2 c3 people are there and c7 also reporting to c8 and then from for c7 so again he is mentor for other people like c1 c2 and C6 also reporting to C7, right? 
like this I want to fetch all the next level hierarchy of C9 okay if you pass the uh, all next level is true and then user ID of this person I want to fetch all the information of uh, next level of this particular user ID okay so that is a use case I am trying to explain here so this whole information this whole information is available in the database okay one of the database MySQL or else Oracle whatever it is we have to write the query we have to write the procedure stored processor you people are already aware of that so based on that so based on the my uh, passing information right so based on that so we need to we need to fetch the information from the uh, hierarchy information so suppose here if you pass all next level is false right so that time what happened only immediate uh, immediate level of uh, c9 we need to fetch it means only c8 you need to fetch it you understood right so this is a hierarchy i am trying to explain here so that's the end to end uh, how to implement that one so this is a use case guys you are clear use case right so before going to start any service we should understand we should understand basic things guys first one is what was the source system what was the source system to initiate the mule soft you understood right as a middleware we are the middleware people somebody consuming our service understood or else somebody uh, I mean somebody initiate the mule soft right so means so we are exposing as a service somebody consuming it so this data so whatever you are expecting the data user ID and the all next level equal true somebody that will come to the some GUI right right so this is a source system so then that is the first thing you need to understand source system is what right what source system is uh, system it is what GUI or else whatever it is so source system we need to understand so second second thing is what format you are getting from the source system so format in the sense like uh, so json format or in xml format or in csv format right so most of the formats uh, this means of will support guys most of the formats so that is the second second thing we need to understand first thing is so what was the source system to initiate the mule second thing is what was the format you are expecting from the from the uh, source system guys so there is a format style okay so third thing is so third thing is anyway business logic so that business logic so anyway they will explain right the uh, business analyst will explain the business logic so then third thing is third thing is uh, what was the target system it is from where we have to pull the information understood right so based on the uh, data payload data so this is nothing but a payload right so in the form of uh, uh, JSON XML or CSV so we'll get the payload right we'll take the payload so we'll hit to the target system after done the logic right whatever the logic we have to apply on this data so once everything is ready so then we have to hit to the target system guys okay so that's target system is nothing but this so where it is available that data either it is in the database or else either it is in the some other some other third party exposed as a service we need to consume it so that type of things we need to talking about it so while before writing this uh, before starting implementation of any service we need to do we need, uh, we need to understand this basic uh, basic understanding things right? what was the source system it is what was the format you are expecting the data so then what was the target system it is so is that any database or else they are exposing any service right so suppose on the next level guys once you done you are clear now so these are the uh, source system is some uh, uh, GUI suppose SFDC lightning is my uh, sales uh, source system lightning okay so this is one of the UI guys so say SFDC lightning okay format is some JSON okay third thing is target system is some MySQL database guys so or else mysql database suppose if it is a database is then fine guys if it is any uh, thing like this suppose uh, they exposed as a um, rest service guys rest service we need to consume the trust service or else so they exposed as a soap service soap web service okay so we need to consume as a using web service consumer we need to consume it right so suppose apart from the mysql 
if the any other service a service also service what we need to do again next step next step immediate step what we need to do so we have a clients called third party system guys I, I was explaining that uh, so postman client and then rest client two uh, two third party systems are there so we need to add plugins to your Chrome or my Mozilla guys there is a plugins for Chrome and Mozilla so we need to add this Chrome and uh, so need to add to the Chrome these two uh, third party system or else you can use uh, SOAP GUI SOAP UI so this is also one more software right so for testing uh, SOAP printed uh, services so for rest we need to use postman client or else test client so for SOAP you have to use SOAP UI guys we already explained that part also we discussed already so SOAP UI also so once you got the service they will share the URL guys boss this is a URL you have to consume it okay so these are these are credentials this is a URL so uh, once you request it so they will serve the response right so they will expose it actually okay once they share the link so what we need to do we have to use these third party systems before implementing the service guys I'm talking about before implementing the service in our views of so just basic understanding basic need things need to check it actually so once they exposed as a service we need to use this type of third party system so just check it is that working or not if that working as we expected you can implement the mule soft service as it is if it is working in the any of the third party system it should work in the mule soft also you understood right so why i'm saying here so they exposed as a service we are trying to implement the uh, mule soft source uh, mule soft service but it's not working we, we are keep on trying so there are different types of errors we are getting so first before that it's better to check in the third party systems like uh, postman client or just for rest services or soap pa for the soap related service okay once it is working here so once you are hitting the request you are getting the expected response with 200 status code and all so then same should be work in the our meals of service also so that's what so before starting to your service so these are the basic understanding you should know right once you're done you can start your logic uh, in the mail soft itself guys so that what the things we need to understand here first thing okay guys are clear right so because why i'm saying here so middleware is always a bit painful guys so uh, gui people are blaming us i mean it's not it's kind of uh, not like that actually we should work as a team but uh, somebody are trying to blame us because so my side is working your side is not working that type of things will come into the picture actually suppose so these are proof for that actually suppose we are trying to hit uh, from wheels of wheels of is facing some issue right so but they are saying so i'm i tried with the postman client so i tried with uh, soap here it was working fine so we can see uh, this is a screenshot they will send like that right so that's why so before starting to your service just try to check in your these softwares right so in this uh, third party plugins uh, install in your mission i mean add your uh, plugins to your chrome then try to check it is that working or not if it is working then no need to check with them actually so we will try to uh, implement in your you know mule soft itself so if it is working here it should work in your mule soft also so that type of things will come into the picture so that's why you need to uh, be careful about these basic things actually so that's it so coming to this use case guys this is a use case i'm trying to explain today okay so i'm trying to fetch the hierarchy information guys so that's it so we'll see the how to follow the coding standards then how to implement it so in this scenario every component you will you people are aware of aware of guys because so there is no new component in this so whatever we discussed so until now so all the syllabus right so that that will cover in this okay so so first one is once hit the request so before that what will you to write guys so here is the thing so for this for this logic right for this logic we need to write the uh, raml guys first we'll start the raml okay so generally we'll write where we'll write the raml guys under 
RAML editor. So if any point platform you have to registration there. So then uh, we have to write the editor itself in the editor itself. So nowadays we have a plugin also there for any point platform, any point studio. So here itself we can write the logic guys. Sorry, here itself we can write the RAML also guys. So here already uh, I written the RAML here. I'm trying to explain here RAML. So here is the only one thing guys, only one service that is nothing but a post post request guys because we are trying to post some information like user id all next level so that kind of one more element you are passing so total three fields you are pushing to the uh, post request okay means we are trying to hit the server with some information right so that's why this uh, i took it i took it as a uh, post service okay so this is nothing but a user hierarchy guys so that's why here i mentioned name it as a user so first level is you people are aware so until here what guys until here until here that is nothing but a root level so that's a common guys so so we have to give the title of your service okay so next one is version of your service so next one is base URI so what base URI you are want to plan to give that base URI you have to update it so next one is media type guys what media type you are expecting what type of expecting uh, data you are expecting okay so then what type of data you are to return back so once you hit the server right suppose here so you are expecting as a json format once you hit the target system what format you are getting right either it's a json or else xml or else any other format you are getting so that so we are telling to that so media type is application slash json okay so means i'm getting a json even I am returning also JSON, so that's what the meaning of that. So next one is guys schemas. Okay. So what is the use of schemas? I already explained guys these schemas. Okay. So we'll write a separate file. We'll mention that in the RAML itself. You understood, right? So both way guys, no need to write other file. Okay. And then write and place that file here. That way is one thing. Another way is so we can write whatever you are going to write that uh, uh, schema you can write here also guys so but here so why i'm writing here so i just segregate it because it's look like good it's look like good right so because otherwise it's a clumsy right if you mention whole thing visibility input dot json so this is my json file you can write here also in the raml itself but so it's better to write outside you can refer there is a schema is one of the keyword in the raml right it's a, it's kind of AML language guys, YAML, AML script to this one. So whatever you are writing in the RAML script, right? That is nothing but AML language. Okay, what I, what I was trying to say here, you can keep this request and response schemas outside of the RAML or else inside of the RAML also you can keep it. That's what I'm trying to say. So once you kept outside, so there is a tag called schemas. We can mention here name of the schema you can mention other schemas a request a response i just gave alias name for that so wherever you want to this use that right just use a request no need to mention all the name of this right you understood right so that's what i did here so request and response so we'll go for request how it is look like i'll explain the schema itself observe here guys these are all things we already discussed one second i'm trying to explain here end to end process so until here common guys no need to do any changes right schema http json schema or draft 04 guys so now earlier 03 also there some of the things are not supported in the 04 now it is the latest thing 04 i guess might be 05 also there so this is a 04 i was using some of the things are not working right some of the written types so that's why i kept it as a 04 so next one is type object guys type object okay so description description is means what was the use of this what was the functionality you are going to achieve it so give some meaningful name so i mention it as a user hierarchy so this is a uh, exact my service name right so that's why i kept it as a user hierarchy you can give it any naming conventions based on your project so next one is properties guys properties means what are the fields you are expecting from the input right this is nothing but what visibility visibility is my service name visibility input dot json is the input request so this is the this is not sample guys this is the schema schema file 
tell us what was the data you are expecting, what are the field names and then with the written types, with the length and all guys, with the written types. If you see here, I am getting a user ID is the first field. What was the written type it is? String. Okay, string. So then, if you, if you come here, so there is a required field also user ID guys. Understood, right? So, user ID, you can mention here also guys, required for true or else if it is multiple fields, generally people will write like this. So, that's why I am explaining the coding standards also. So, user ID, user ID type is string. So, next one is assignment node ID. Assignment node ID is an integer. Okay. So, next one is next to node ID. So, that is also integer. So, these two are optional guys. So that's why I didn't explain earlier. So, next one is all or next level. This is mandatory field. Only two mandatory fields guys. User ID is, uh, that is a mandatory required equal true guys. So next one is all or next level. So that is also that is also mandatory. Observe here guys, this is what guys? Enum. Enum is what? The value should be within this boundary guys. Either NL or else all. All means all next level. NL means only next level. That's the meaning of that. NL means next level. All means all the next level of that person. Right? So that is a uh, uh, field called uh, all or next level. You understood, right? So first one is user ID. So that is a uh, required and required field. It should come from the uh, client itself. So next one is all or next level. So that is also string and then enum type is that value should be nl or all because enum tell us means so uh, the value will give, will give certain values guys. The value should be within the boundary. Suppose uh, I mentioned weak as a enum, enum, right? So enum is the uh, one of the key guys that is introduced 1.5 Java onwards actually. Here also we are using enum. So uh, the meaning is suppose I'm mentioning a weak, 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 right? Weak is a it's a string. So we mentioned as a written type is in uh, it's nothing but a enum. So that means the the weak value should be in the uh, seven days, right? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. It should be within this boundary actually. If it is not there within this boundary, suppose we are expecting from the client the enum value of all or next level, either it's NL or O. Apart from that, any other value we're getting from the client will give it as an error, guys. Who will take care of that one? The API kit will take care. It will give the proper error message, boss. We are expecting only these two values, but we are getting apart from that other value we are getting. So, if it is really required, we should add in to the enum actually. That time we will get that value. You understood, right? That is the meaning of enum. So, here required fields are two. So, we have to mention single single field, nothing but a, there is a required. So, then we can keep it all the things within the square bracket. Suppose how many fields are mandatory, you can mention that within double quotes. So next one is additional properties false guys. Additional properties false. So what is the use of additional properties false means, right? So we are expecting only these these five values from the user. That is in that up, uh, uh, sorry in the four four fields uh, only four fields we are expecting the from the client. Apart of that four, user ID all our next level is mandatory. Remaining are optional. If they send, they will take will take it. If they not, not send, also we we we'll just ignore it, right? So apart from that, so he is planning to send one more field guys. So but we kept it as additional properties called false. While in shell time, so they clarified only these fields are we are getting from uh, client. So accordingly we should handle. But suddenly so after few days he will send one more field, right? So that time what happened? We mentioned already additional fields, additional properties, false, right? So that whatever the field you are giving, that fifth field, we won't accept it. Why? Because already we fixed that additional property is false. Apart from that, if you give any value, any other value, right, it is giving an error. Until unless you keep the value here within the properties, the fifth value is there now. So they should intimate us first actually. Boss, we are going to add a new field. So that is fine. So then we need to add the under the properties file, a RAML, uh, there is a schema properties file. Then we should allow it guys. Otherwise, until unless, we should not allow that field. So who will take care of that part? Our API kit will respond back. So boss, 
we are not expecting this value, this is a new value. So is it required? You need to add it, then we have to add in the properties value, we, uh, accordingly we will go ahead. Otherwise, you won't accept that new field guys. You understood right, what I am trying to say here is my input schema guys. I am trying to restrict the user actually, boss, we should get only these four values. Out of four values, you can send only these two values, user ID, all are next level. So if you want to send these two values, you can send, I will handle accordingly. If you are not sending also, uh, there is no showstopper. We will go ahead so with uh, these two values, user ID and then all are next level. So understood, right? So once you have done this, where will you mention this? This is outside, so there is a clearly see this guy. I just create a schema. So whenever you are trying to create a project with RAML, automatically it will create a schema, examples and then visible to RAML guys. So, but if you want to write, so apart from that, uh, uh, using RAML editor, so if you want to write manually, while writing manually also simply create the package, under that keep that uh, JSON or else scheme of guys, understood right? Similarly example guys, sample input, so see the sample input, what I am trying to send it, so they are expecting JSON format, so that's why I am passing user ID, so the next one is node ID, and all are next level. You understood right? So that is other other field is also optional. Node ID is also optional. If you send it, then fine. If you not send it, so it will ignore it. But you should send user ID and all are next level commanded. Okay. So then, so coming back to the RAML guys, if you see here, you understood right? So this is a request. That a request uh, schema. So and then similarly response also guys. Once you hit the request to the target system, you will get the response also. Here I am restricting to the response also I am restricting guys. So boss, we should get this, this format of response from the target system, right, once you hit that. So how, how I am expecting, observe here guys, data, I told you already, so that should be in the JSON format, okay, that should be in the JSON format. So that's why I mentioned clearly in the flower packet. After that, it should be an object. Okay, so until here, until here, common guys. So properties. So what are the properties you are expecting? So total records. It should be in the integer. Okay, error code. If you are getting any error code, suppose uh, uh, some getting failure. That particular node ID is not there, guys. Whatever you are hitting, user ID itself not there. So then what we'll do? So we have to give that error error code might be it's a 400, it's a, it's a data issue, right? Uh, or else record not found, we can give it something like uh, 404. 404 is an authentication based on your uh, uh, client specific codes, guys. They will share the uh, status codes, actually. So if, it is a, if you get a client error, what we'll do? If we get a, generally we'll give 400 plus, guys, if it is a client mistake. If it is a server side, we'll give 500 plus. I mean 500 plus in the sense 501, 502, 503 like that. If it is any data issue, so our side issue, uh, we'll, I mean success, for, uh, for success we will give 200 plus. For client side mistake we will give 400 plus, 401, 402, 403 like that. If it is any server side mistake, target system uh, issue, so we will give 501, 502, 503. Any success will give 200 plus, 201, 202, 203 like that. So that status code you have to give it back. And then error message also is detailed error message you have to get from the uh, exception strategy, right? We discussed the concept exception handling. So the, from there itself, we'll give we'll get a cause dot uh, uh, exception dot cause message, right? Get message that message you have to pass to the uh, back to the client. So that error message. So and then notes guys. So the hierarchy also we should give guys. Suppose if, uh, from the client perspective. He is giving all levels, right? All level. At that time, we should get as in a hierarchy, right? It's nothing but another. Under C9, mm -hmm. C8 is there. So then C1, C2, C3 like that there, right? So that we have, we should give it as an array. So that's why I mentioned like a type is whatever the nodes are there. That is nothing but an array. Under the properties are node ID, then name, then level ID. So you understood, right? So these three fields are I'm getting from the uh, related to user, but top level if you see, I am getting total records, how many records are getting, uh, error code, error message if it is there an issue, so then uh, we are getting 
Now specific to data, we are getting like this. You understood, right? So this is an array. If you see total data is in the form of uh, what? It is in the form of uh, um, a JSON. You understood, right? So this is expected output, uh, expected output format from the from the uh, target system. So if you see response, you can, you can see example response also, sample response dot JSON. So this is my response back guys. What I'm getting, total records are 8, that is under data, right? So if you see it's a JSON array, no, multiple records are I'm getting. Error code is 0 because I get a success, right? If you get a success, there is no value in the error code, right? So next one is, if you see nodes, node ID is this, name is this, level ID is this. Node ID is this, name is this, and level ID is this. Might be same level people also is reporting. That's why you're getting like this. So next one is node ID is this, name is this, and level ID is this. Like multiple values we are getting. It's nothing but an array, right? Error message written success, guys. Why? Because, why? because here there is no message. There is no error, right? So that's why I'm giving a success message back. Okay, any questions guys about this? That is a request schema and response schema. Similarly, output. Output also we are restricting. So that's why I written a schema for that also. Generally, while starting your project, while starting your project, so uh, if you restrict now, what will happen? Suppose here, visibility input you write, you return. You are restricted to the client. You are restricted to the client. So that time what happened always you should, you should follow the whatever you written that right ramal thing you should follow the things you should sign the action. So that's why while while discussing the uh, requirement itself so after this guys after basic steps so then coming back to your logic right coming back to your logic so with BA or else with your architect right so business analyst is explain functional requirement so coming to so it's in uh, architect level right they will explain so they will explain so what are the fields for ramel right input and the, and the output so about ramel things we need to discuss it guys so boss tell me what are the fields i have to allow into the uh, ramel what are the response what was the response format what was the response fields i have to return back right so these things we have to uh, need to take the decision. So based on the decision, we need to fix the uh, uh, targets, uh, fix the schemas, guys. Otherwise, you know, uh, suppose you didn't intimate them, you you are trying to restrict the user. So then they they should not allow, right? So suppose he is not sending uh, user ID, right? User ID is not sending. That time, what happened? Will give clear error message. Boss, user ID is a mandatory field, but you are not sending. So that's why. So first we need to discuss that. But uh, what was the input system? What was the input fields? So can you tell me what are the mandatory fields? Of? I have to fill it, right? And then return type also, guys. Input fields as well as the return type. See how they are expecting that we are planning, guys. Right? Input fields and then return type also. Return type and then if any sample value is there, we can take it. So mandatory and then option what the mandatory field of input what are the optional field of input right? if it is a any written type a written type is an enum so then take the sample values of that right we should we should know that because we should allow only uh, whatever you mentioned within that enum that value should allow it so while while writing the logic before writing the logic so just we need to finalize the input fields then written type right? suppose so until still discussion is going on right still discussion is going on you so that time at least we just uh, keep it so required is uh, just required is remove it so the time what happened what are the fields they are sending so we are, we will accept it actually if we remove these two once you finalize the requirement so then you can uh, you can validate like this actually input fields we have to mention out of that input fields so what are the mandatory what are the optional we have to mention it so next one is the return type guys. What are the return type it is? If it is any enum is what was the sample. So once you've done this, take the sample payload also. You understood it? For testing purpose our side, we should know, we should know. Otherwise you have to keep it test values. Right? So that mock data, that sample data we can take it. So that is about input. Similarly, output also guys. 
So we should know the output fields. Output fields. So in the output fields, what are the mandatory fields are there? What are the optional fields are there? So that you have to match. Okay. So similarly, in total time. So then here also, so what are the mandatory fields you should get from the response itself? And then, uh, so what are the optional fields it is? Any enum values that we have to take. So anyway, so that is not required actually. So uh, mandatory and then optional. If it is any enum also, it will mention actually. So this is the way, uh, uh, this is the next level of things guys, coming to your specific logic. So based on that, we will write this uh, schema. Understood, right? If it is any, it's still discussion is going on, we will uh, remove the mandatory fields and then what other thing. Uh, so additional properties false, right? That is also removed. We will allow whatever the information they are sending, they are uh, getting. So we will send that as it is actually. You understood, right? If it is a requirement is clarification is done, so then we will restrict like this. That is the use of RAM, guys. You understood, right? So here is the thing. So coming back to RAM and so here. So I'm so up to here you are, you guys are clear, right? Schemas. So next level is it's a resource level, guys. I just keep it as slash user. So that's that will add to your uh, base URL, guys. Understood, right? HTTP local host 7002. So 7012. So now after that API will come. So after that user slash visibility, guys. User slash visibility. Okay, so there is a resource name you can say. Under that there is a, a method called post. There is a method called post. So the post also I, I was clearly explained the description and all. So getting sharing notes based on the filter. So then body. Body is in the form of application slash JSON. Schema is request guys. Observe here. What is meant by request here? I already defined what is meant by request here. So that request will go there, so it will execute that visibility JSON. If it is anything is fine, it's missing in the content, missing in that uh, syntax, it will give error guys, here itself, right. If it is working fine, then it will take the request, so it will execute accordingly. I am giving sample input also. So based on that, uh, it's kind of, uh, you know, so that is uh, for a documentation purpose, whole things we are preparing in the RAM and uh, validation purpose also, right. So we'll share to the client based on that you can easily understand this description based and all right. So based on this schema, based on this example, you can able to understand. So once you uh, hit the request, right, so you are getting a 200. If you are getting a 200, again body should be in the JSON format. Schema is response. Where is that again? So this is the response here. So that should be in the form of this format. And then uh, example is, I mentioned, right, so this is for documentation purpose. So if it is a 201 also, I am giving same thing actually. So body is application JSON type, so then response schema is response. Next example is like this. You understood, right? Any questions on this diamond? I just create one request that is nothing but the post request. I was clearly mentioning uh, the resource name is user slash user hierarchy visibility. Then there is a post method. So what format you are getting as an input we are mentioning. Uh, and then what was the sample of that, what was the schema for input, right? All these things were mentioned into the uh, API folder itself. So if it is once done, if you are getting a 200, so then what data we have to give it back. So we can mention the response 400 also guys. If you are getting a 400, what data respond back? That we have to write it, but here in this case I just mentioned only you know, success, you know, success scenarios only. You understood guys, any questions until now? No sir. Okay, good. Okay, once you are done RAML, okay, so suppose you are, you done using uh, uh, any point studio itself. We need to create a basic flow right? right click on your project, right click on your project. So we'll get an option view, generate flows option, we'll get it guys. Generate flows from the visitor, from the REST API, uh, like this option you'll get guys. I already generate, generated flows, that's why I'm not getting generate flows. So here is a REST API visitor, so we'll get option, one more option called generate flows. That should get it as so based on that, it will generate the basic flows, guys. Basic flows in the sense we already seen, right? Based on that uh, 
uh, RAML that we create the basic flows, right? So with the data, whatever you mentioned, example data, right? Then it will use that data to create the basic flows, right? With API kit and all. Understood. So that is the thing actually. So if you are implementing based on the uh, any point should itself, uh, once you done uh, refresh the flow, it will create the uh, flows and all, the basic flows. Okay. So that is the thing actually. Once you done that. Once you've done the basic flows, then we have to extend your logic, right? Same basic flows. So for that, so it will create API kit and all, guys. So here, before going to API kit, so I just follow the sta uh, coding standards, guys, in this. What I did here, um, there is a init flow I created, guys. Generally, if you see our examples, before API kit, nothing is there actually, right? Once you hit the request, first it will go to the API kit router, right? So under that API kit router, so what we'll mention our flows. In this case, I have only one flow is there, but uh, so we can mention multiple flows also. See here, I have only one flow is there. I just mentioned that flow here actually. So, but if you have any other flows also, you can, there is a plus symbol is there, you can add, keep on adding uh, new flows, guys. Any new flows are there, you can show here uh, resource name, where it will, where it will show, user slash user visibility, that we have to show you, right? Application JSON automatically coming, because you mentioned there itself, then you can show flow name, guys. If it is any flow name, it will automatically come here, right? So, means how it will come automatically because we already uh, generate the flows guys right so in this case it will, uh, i was generating only one flow right but so if you generate multiple flows like post or get uh, and then put or delete right so that will all showing here actually based on that we'll show we'll select that particular flow it will come here and that's uh, action also it will show if it is a put so it will show it as update if it is a delete, it will show us a delete like that, it will show us that. So you guys are clear, right? Until now, so that is API kit. So in this particular scenario, what I did actually, so in, in our previous earlier examples, so once you have done the RAML, so while it, after the project, once you started, so project, it will directly, after HTTP component, we will mention a API kit router. It will go to the router, it will route it accordingly based on your request. If you are hitting an update, so then it will go to the update flow. If you are requesting a create, then it will go to the create flow. But in this particular scenario, before that I mentioned a flow reference. This is what component guys, this is nothing but a flow reference. Let me see. Okay, so here I mentioned it as a flow reference, guys. This is nothing but what I just drag and drop the flow, flow reference from the uh, palette itself. In the flow reference, what I did, so I just shown as a uh, flow name. So that is what was the flow name? Visibility underscore init in it. Okay, so that I written a separate flow, guys. Okay. I will tell you so why I written it in it flow here. Think like this, guys. Suppose something gone wrong uh, that uh, target system, we should show basic uh, default response we have to send back to the user, right? With error code and error messages and all, with the default things we need to send back to the user, right? So you are not getting the response from the user also, right? So, I mean, uh, target system also, you have to prepare a, a default response, we have to send back to the uh, client, whoever consuming us, right? So, that's why here, I just prepared a init flow, init subflow I prepared. Observe here, so what I did here, whatever the information I'm getting from the HTTP connector, the HTTP connector will always convert that into the buffer, bu byte, uh, buffer input stream, right? So, once you take that, so we are calling the flow reference, right? 
So it will jump to the visibility unit. This is my flow, flow name, subflow name. It will jump here. So in this, what I did? So this is a transformer, guys. We already aware of about this each and every component. So object to string. So after taking the data from the HTTP connector, so it will convert it to object to string. So next one is uh, observe here, guys. What about the transaction string you are getting from the input, right? So that I'm holding in the payload itself. So next one is here, I'm preparing the response guys. Observe here, what I'm preparing here. Uh, transaction start time, right? And then data. Because if you see my output, so how it is look like guys, that is whole data, that is whole data. How we are expecting sample response, I'm, I'm trying to show here. How we are getting guys, under a data, all records should be there. Right? Under a data, under data, notes data is separate, apart from the total records and error code also we are showing. You understood. So whatever the response you are getting, that should be in under data guys. So that's why I, what I am trying to do here. I am preparing a sample response. Right? And the first thing, uh, we just keep it as a uh, default response. That is empty response. That is empty response. First one is I calculate the transaction start time guys. So this transaction start time, I just create a one variable, transaction start time, it's an invocation variable guys. So what what was the current time we are capturing? What was the current server time we are capturing? We are capturing the action. Why? Because you know sometimes uh, uh, performance issue will come, right? If it is coming performance issue. So people will ask what was exactly mule was taking time, right, for each day. So for them we need to explain boss, uh, this is a starting, head to the starting time to um, reach our main shop. This is the ending time, so finish the service. If you uh, subtract from uh, starting to ending, right, we will get original data, right, original time. How much time it will take? Because sometimes we should, I mean, if the people are not following uh, SLA, within SLA we should give back to the response, suppose. Uh, that uh, GUI guy have SLA 30 seconds whole things should complete within a 30 seconds we have to send back the response right? suppose we are not touching that 30 seconds we are not sure that is a taking target system is taking more time or else mule is taking uh, more time we need to justify that right so part of, uh, out of 30 seconds where it will uh, take more time we need to tune that part actually right so for that purpose here I just keep it a transaction start time as an invocation variable. So this time what happened? Once you will hit the request, the transaction time, so it will hold into the that variable uh, called transaction start time. You are clear, right? Why I am keeping here transaction start time? So we need to tell them actually, the exactly new will only take this much time. Remaining might be uh, out of uh, more time it was taking the text and system. So that's why you are giving a timeout issue. So, an example data is which format guys, notes, notes, uh, it's kind of array guys, notes is nothing but an array, that's why I'm mentioning uh, like, node, see whole thing is nothing but a map guys, under notes only array, right, so that's what uh, I'm, I'm expecting here, so notes is data will come, n word yes as it is will come there, but inside data is empty as of now. So how we are mentioning here, it's kind of array, notes is nothing but an array, we'll expect as an array. So that is empty array I'm mentioning the default response. Now I am feeling guys, variable. So if you see variable, okay, so what it was getting, data, data and data. Okay. Whatever the data we are getting, now in the data is nothing, right? Whatever the data is there, right? Under the data, original data we get. That's why as of now there is empty, response is an empty, so that's why I mentioned it. Now I am setting some default response guys, observe here. So data is, I am talking about data is this guys, virtual data, if you observe here in the response, the data is nothing but sample array, if you see here, oh sorry it's an JSON actually. So under the data so many records are there. The default in the default response what I mentioned default response 
if you see here data colon data e success false error code is 0 1 2 3 error, error, error description is test so here data means virtual data as of now nothing is the data actually means uh, something goes wrong in the target system obviously we are giving data as an empty right so that will come data as an empty next one upper to remember e success false means it's a value transaction error code is 0 1 2 3 and then error description is the test I kept here this is a sample data but we can give that uh, genuine uh, error description genuine error code we can give e success always false so but we can give it actually any anything goes wrong on uh, target system you can give it as a as default response why I'm saying here if anything goes wrong in your flow right so suppose target system it will give at least basic response right so with the empty response with the e success forms the error code and all clearly we are showing you understood guys right once this is done so then it will jump to the API kit now we have a we have a empty response we have a, a default response guys so then we now we will write the original logic we are going to, we should go in, we should overwrite that uh, default response right so that's what we are doing in the flow you understood why i am writing init flow init flow is uh, the purpose of the init flow is here for preparing the default response you understood so why because here uh, something uh, gone wrong in the target system we will go to the exception handling we will prepare the that is also same right in the error handling what we will do we will prepare the response we will prepare the response back then we will show that response as it is so before that showing into the exception handling i am implementing the init flow the default response will get you understood guys so that is the purpose of init flow i'm not forcing to write the init flow but i'm trying to explain the basic standards actually this is a this is a way better way to write the logic you understood right so that's what about init flow so so tomorrow we'll continue this part guys so this uh, main flow how will you overwrite that uh, so data so we'll give back, give back to the response so how will audit log table implementation how we'll do it how we'll implement the asynchronous flow so we'll discuss about it. so until now any coaches guys No, sir. Okay, fine. I'll share the recording once again. Go through it. So similar manner. So try to implement it.